I think you're comfortably off. You reckon I'm comfortably off? You just make yourself feel like you're comfortably off. <laughs> <before. laughs> Problem, Where are sure. you? I'm definitely not comfortably well. well I'm off the chart, mate. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, guys, and welcome to another video. My name's Mark. I'm an entrepreneur and property investor. And in today's video, we're talking about the nine levels of wealth that I think everybody out there needs to understand. Then you need to be able to pick whereabouts you want to be and find a route to get you there. So before we get into the video, if you like this sort of content, like talking about wealth creation, please give this video a big like. And why not consider subscribing? I'd like to try and give as much back as I possibly can. We have our subscriber dividend portfolio, four and a half thousand pounds, something like that in there at the moment. And I'm putting an additional two thousand pounds in there every single month. And we're going to pay the dividends out to the subscribers. All you've got to do is leave a comment and you'll enter automatically into that draw. And we'll draw it about the tenth of every single month. But let's get into the nine levels of richness. And this was written by Felix Dennis. He was a publisher best known for the British publication, I think. PC Shopper and Maxim, you probably have heard of him in that sense. And I think a lot of this stuff might be a little bit controversial and people might feel a bit offended, but I thought it was important to get it down, go through it. I tend to actually agree with this. So I'm gonna go through it with you guys and give you the Felix Dennis version of the nine levels of wealthness or richness or whatever you wanna describe it as. So number one, comfortably poor. So this is liquid assets of 50,000 to 200,000 and total assets or net worth of one to two million. And it might seem bizarre, but somebody could have a net worth of one to two million and still be defined as poor. But when you start to think about it and you go comfortably poor, you start thinking, well, what is comfortably poor? You're not able to go out and buy whatever you want whenever you want which you probably can't if you've only got 50 grand in liquid and, and one to two million of net assets. You might have a home that's worth 1.5 million with a mortgage of, of half a million on it. So you've got a net, ass, net worth of one million, but at the same time, only 50 grand in the bank, you're not that rich, are you? You can't go out and buy whatever you want whenever you want. Add in private school for kids, add in cars or anything else, you could quite easily be described as comfortably poor. And I think it's quite important to say I think the language is emotive because it's poor, but at the same time, we're looking at levels here. This is a ladder. This is sort of... Would, you, would it be described as ladder? No, it's not really a ladder, is it? Yeah, it's a ladder, but it's it? upside down. <laughs> it's, it's an upside down ladder. You need to descend. You need to slide down as quickly as you can. And the other thing I think is really important to say, society is really geared up to try and make sure people are poor comfortably or uncomfortably poor, which I think is probably the 10th level, and we'll get onto that in a bit. But comfortably poor, you need to have that emotive reason to keep going to work. And really, if you've only got 50 to 200 grand in liquid, so we're talking stocks and shares, gold, we're talking cash in bank, all the sort of things that you could dispose of very, very quickly, and total assets or net worth, I think it should really be described as net worth rather than total assets, but I'm copying it exactly as it was written in the book, of one to two million pounds, then you probably are comfortably poor. Now the next level on here is comfortably off. I guess a take on well off, right? And we're looking at 200K of liquid to 500K of liquid and three to four million pounds of net worth. It's also important to say you could have more assets but less liquid assets and still not be comfortably poor. For example, if you had a home of two and a half million, all paid off, no money in the bank and no job, you're probably uncomfortably poor. You can't do anything, you can't pay the bills, you can't eat, there's nothing that you can do. So you're uncomfortably poor at that point. In Felix Dennis's book, he does say you have to have both aspects in order to be at that level. So for myself, I would probably put myself as comfortably off, right? I've got between 200 and 500K of liquid stuff that tomorrow I could sell. Obviously, my net assets are higher because I've got property, I've got three and a half million pounds worth of property, but I have got 1.7 million pounds worth of debt. So, you know, that nets down to about 1.8 million in, in property assets. But I've also got private businesses that I own that bump my net worth up significantly. But because my liquid assets are probably only somewhere in this bracket, I would put myself as comfortably off. And it's probably true. I don't feel like I can go out and splash as much money as I want on anything I want. And you might think, and I certainly thought when I was at the beginning of my journey, if I had 200 to 500 grand in the bank and three to four million pounds worth of assets, I wouldn't look at the price on anything. It's a fallacy. 
there's levels to this game. And I'm still at the beginning-ish of my journey. It just takes a long, long time to get from uncomfortably poor to comfortably poor. But the speed at which you start to descend down this list probably increases over time because you got the skills, you've got the experience, you've got the capital to be able to invest to go down the levels quicker. Let's look at the comfortably wealthy, 500 to a million in liquid cash, five to 15 million of net assets. I would say I hope to be there mid 2023, something like that. I would hope to be classed as comfortably wealthy by this chart. I'm certainly on the right trajectory. I'm keeping my expenses as low as possible. Got lots of money coming in from lots of different sources, property, investing, businesses, working, all the things that I do with my life, I expect to be comfortably wealthy at some point in 2023. That said, will I feel like I'm rich? No, not really. I've been to the Southampton Boat Show where you can buy a yacht for five and a half, six, seven million pounds. It would be all of my net worth gone. I couldn't afford a private jet. Of course I couldn't. A Golf G650? What's that, Tom? You know, don't you? Yeah, sure. It's how much? I don't know. <laughs> 64 million, something like that. But you get my point. 65 million quid for a jet. That doesn't include running costs, pilots, anything else. You're miles off being what we would epitomize as rich. So the lesser rich, one to five million in net liquid assets, 16 to 39 million in total assets. And bear in mind, guys, I was speaking to a guy a couple of days ago. He's worth in the hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions, maybe, maybe billion, but certainly the late hundreds of millions. He would definitely bracket it out like this and say there's very little difference between 15 and 100 million. He would say that is all about the same. There's very little difference to what you can do if you've got a net worth of 15 million and what you can do if you've got a net worth of 100 million. You still can't afford a super, super yacht, right? You need to have 500 million. You still can't afford a private jet. You know, you need to have 500 million as an absolute minimum. You can go to any nice hotel, you can have the nicest restaurants, you can do all the things, the nicest cars, all the normal things, you can have the nicest of everything. You can fly first class rather than flying economy. All about the same in this level. Once you get over sort of 100, 200, 300 million, then you're able to sort of partake in the more expensive side, which would be the super yachts, the yacht jets. The only difference here is really the charity donations, the amount that you can give away. So the next one on our list is comfortably rich, six to 15 million, 40 to 74 million in total assets. Then we've got the first level of actual richness, which is 16 to 35 million in liquid and 75 to 100 million in net worth. And I very, very much hope to be there in the next five to 10 years. Seriously rich, truly rich and super rich. I mean, these levels are for very, very few people. Not only because of the amount of time it takes to get to this sort of level, but the amount of energy and do you want to continue? Only a few people want to continue down this route rather than start enjoying their life a little bit more. I mean, the question would always be, do you want to work like a dog till you're 70 and never have a chance to enjoy your wealth? I've read Die With Zero, Bill Perkins, great book. It's all about life enjoyment of money. And I prescribe to that. Once I get to 45, I'm gonna start decumulating money rather than accumulating more. So for me, I've got about six, seven years before I wanna start spending down much, much quicker and enjoying my life. Because that's sort of, for me, the tipping point of when your body starts to get to the point where you don't really wanna go jet skiing in your 90s, right? So guys, the last thing is for us to just put officially and uncomfortably poor above this, isn't it? And that level, unfortunately, is for anybody who's got less than 50 grand in liquid and less than 1 million in net assets. Tom, where do you put yourself on the levels? I'm above that. I'm, I'm further back. You're further above. <laughs> You're very uncomfortably poor. Probably as firm, that's just, yeah, just broke. broke, brutally broke. broke. <laughs> These sort of charts are really useful, okay? So first of all, understand where you are understand what's possible, and then build a route of how to get there. I bring Tom into these sort of videos, not to make fun of him, more to sort of encourage him and say, look, recognize where you are today, and Tom, you'll be able to say, do, how much encouragement do I give you to improve, right? A lot. A lot, right? All I want is people to take this sort of information, understand what is possible, and then work your way to generate the wealth that's suitable for you. Not everybody wants to be super rich. I know I certainly don't. I'm quite comfortable getting somewhere mid-table on this and having the most amazing life. Let's say every single one of these levels, wherever you start to move down to the next level takes another decade. How far would you go? 
Let me know in the comments. I'll see you on the next video. Like and subscribe as always. And thanks so much for watching.